my the pop always drips out of this bottle like when it's full hi guys i am here with your bible study i'm sorry i don't feel good i've been sick all day my stomach and just one of my stomach flare-ups I think I just don't feel good okay um, we're going to be reading tonight in the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 is what we'll be reading for with a devotion tonight we'll be reading all of Jeremiah chapter 31 and Jeremiah tonight but let me read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, that will go along with the devotion tonight. And it says, The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Amen. Now let's get into Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. Again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praise heard and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great thong will return. They will come with weeping, they will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble. Sorry. Because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the words of the Israel, O nations. Or sorry, let me get this open real quick. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will scatter them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will ransom Jacob and redeem them from the land of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord. The grain, the new wine, and the oil the young of the flocks and herds. They will be like a well-watered garden, and they will sorrow no more. Then maidens will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them correct comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Rama, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because her children are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. For your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. So there is hope for your future, declares the Lord. 
your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's moaning. You disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breast. I was ashamed and humiliated, because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion for him, declares the Lord. Set up road signs, put up guideposts, take note of the highway, the road that you take. Return, O virgin Israel, return to your towns. How long will you wander, O faithful daughter? The Lord will create a new thing on earth. A woman will surround a man. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, O righteous dwelling, O sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sheep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster. So I will watch over them to build and plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on the edge. Set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for his own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, his own teeth will be set on edge. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them declares the Lord this is the covenant I will make with this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after the time declares the Lord I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine at night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when this city will be rebuilt for me from the tower of Hanel to the corner gate. The measuring line will stretch from the strait to the hill of Garb and then turn to Goa, the whole valley where dead bodies and ashes are thrown, and all the terraces out of the Kidron Valley on the east as far as the corner of the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted or demolished. And that was all of Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm glad you bared with me through that one. That one was a little longer than what we have been reading.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to read the devotion that goes along with that psalm, or with that reading. And this one is by Jeanette Hanscom, and she has wrote some of these before. She says, Jesus loves me, this I know. I'd grown up on the song and sung it to my children. But when my friend Jean spontaneously started singing, Jesus loves me, after our Bible study group celebrated communion, tears welled up as if it were new to me. I'd chosen a word for the year, loved, after feeling drawn to Jeremiah 31, 3. I knew that though... I'd made a lot of progress in grasping my value in Christ. I still had work to do when it came to trusting that I was loved. I spent the year paying attention to what I privately called love notes from Jesus, special moments with friends, desires fulfilled after years of praying and hoping, returning to the church that had supported me as a newly single mom this time as an author and speaker, seeing him provide for needs, even allowing him to reveal truths that were hard to accept, came to a close. I continued to notice his love notes. As I sang with my friends, I felt overwhelmed. I'd accepted him as Savior at five years old, but today his love felt fresh. Jesus loves me. We sing the words and quote verses, but how often does the reality of his love sink in? How often do we take time to consider the countless ways he says, I love you every day? Because he surely does, guys, more than anybody else in the world. Anybody in this world can turn on you. Jesus never will. God never will. Their love will never leave you no matter what you do. They'll always be waiting on you to come back to them or to come to them. They're always there for you. If you want to do the homework tonight, it is find the words to Jesus loves me. Print a copy of them to keep handy. Or if you know the song, you know the song. Sing the song to Jesus. Let the words sink in. Jesus loves me, this I know. You know that song. For the Bible told me so. Okay, our next um, Bible study is going to be in Hebrews. We'll be doing Hebrews chapter 9. I'm sorry if you guys didn't enjoy the Bible study today. I felt I felt really bad and I wasn't going to do it at all, but I wanted to get it done and get it out there. Ask everybody to be nice to one another and pray for each other and help one another. Check on your neighbors if you can. Check on your family if you can, even if it's just with a phone call, this virus and everything going on. You know, just in our state alone, where we live in Ohio, there's like 169 cases right now. And we just had our first death from the virus. So, it's um, getting worse. So, please just keep everybody in your prayers and be careful. Stay in when you can. And if you have to go out, if you got a mask, please wear one. I'm going to see if Sherm can get us some when he goes to the doctor. He's got one. He's going to wear to the doctor. And I'm going to see if we can get some more. Because every place is sold out of them. And I don't want to go out to go to the store or anything if I'm not wearing a mask. Chance getting sick because my immune system's really low. And Sherm's got diabetes and other health problems. So, you know, it's really dangerous for him to go out. So I don't want him going out, you know, unless he absolutely has to. And he has to go to the doctor. And so please just remember this horrible virus and remember to be nice to everybody instead of being mean to everybody. Fighting over toilet paper and 
stuff like that in the stores like some people are doing. We're supposed to help each other, not hurt each other. Why not buy the toilet paper, split the cost, and share it? Share the toilet paper. Here, I got two. You can have one, I'll have one. I don't think they're going to stop making toilet paper. They're going to try to keep the grocery stores open so we can have food, I imagine. And they'll have more toilet paper, too. I'm sure, I would hope. But even if not, you don't want... You want that on your conscience, fighting somebody over toilet paper and stuff? I wouldn't. I'd rather help somebody else and do without. That's what everybody should do. Help each other. So please just think about that. And I hope you enjoyed Bible study tonight. And I hope you guys have a good night's sleep. Good night, guys.